so can you hear me Hi. so let me thank uh, ram hind gupta ma'am for inviting me and scheduling talk just before banquet it ensures a good audience if not full and um, at the to the topic i am uh, talking about is uh, rather in a time warp i mean in the sense that these are the uh, subject topics which were uh, popular during my phd days or slightly before that this is about self organized criticality something about griffith's phase and uh, though i didn't work on them in the beginning i have kept thinking about these problems for a long time this is a work done with um, phd student uh, manish matte and uh, manoj warambhe and uh, somebody who did phd in experiment but then she did a, um, she was a contributor teacher in our computer lab and she did some work so this is about i mean okay this is a something which was a puzzle then that there are power laws everywhere fractals were a rage in that time that the fractals were di just discovered and i find a fractal in this phenomena or that phenomena could be a paper now so they found fractals everywhere i mean the forest fires came in all sizes i mean there were small bush fires and then there were la large forest fires of course large forest fire can cannot be plenty otherwise there will be no forest and uh, there have to be some fires otherwise forest will engulf everything so you have uh, something kind of uh, on the criticality on the i mean on the age the forest stayed and there is the famous gutenberg richter's law which is on the logarithmic scale i mean uh, something which is with the strength 7 this is the logarithmic scale so and this 8 so something happens uh, at the scale of 6 he has uh, say uh, there are two earthquakes then uh, there will be one earthquake at the scale 8 and then there will be four earthquakes at the 6 something like that solar flares landslides then uh, landslides occur in all sizes epidemics there is a data even terrorist attack number of people killed in terrorist attack if you look at it and plot this particular thing it even shows a power law brain activity shows a power law evolution somebody is apparently spent 10 years in library looking at the uh, how many species die in a particular period so for long period nothing happens and suddenly in a certain period lot of species go extinct and then there are periods where fewer species go extinct and so on and so forth. so there are number of species which go extinct in a given particular period goes like a power law brain activity it shows a power law i mean that time period for which it stays crescent and for the time period it says it fires and all that now so there there were examples these are for for the fluctuations in cotton prices uh, suppose the cotton prices are going through the roof now and now if you are holding cotton derivative or whatever the question is whether you should sell or buy so the interesting thing is that if you look at the fluctuations in cotton prices and cotton prices yesterday minus cotton prices to the absolute value then it tells that the, if you had a okay there are some correlations in the sense that if you had a high fluctuation yesterday there will be high fluctuation today but uh, you don't know the magnitude you don't know the sign i mean it will be in same directions or the other direction but if you look at the fluctuations the possibility of high fluctuations cannot be ruled out the possibility of strong fluctuations large fluctuations in stock market etc cannot be ruled out Uh, city sizes come in all sizes there are very large size cities and earthquakes come in all sizes now why this is puzzling this is puzzling because this is puzzling because in in physics in generally you see the gaussian distribution is called normal distribution because it is normal to in this room you have students i mean boys may have height say 5 foot 7 inch on an average and uh, you will have spread uh, around maybe 6 feet person you will get maybe 7 feet you will not get 100 per feet person in this particular room and in this this room cannot accommodate 100 foot person so but however you can earn 10 rupees 100 rupees 1000 rupees million rupees whatever okay so the, the num uh, there will be fewer people earning that particular money but that the, that possibility still exists so this power laws exist in nature and they don't exist for example they don't see in model systems at least in physics in physics you see power laws only at particular point in statistical physics in particular you find them in so called continuous phase transitions you have a continuous phase transition the the length scales and time scales diverge and at the precisely at the critical point you find those power laws in space and time at the onset they are very difficult to achieve experimentally students will spend one month two month experimentally and you will get one decade of power law and still paper is published because editors know that you can't do better and even in models you spend students spend lot of time just to find the critical point 
finding critical point itself to the four digit, fifth digit is a lot of a thing. But nature finds it effortlessly. Nature goes and finds a power law. Now, how does it do it? Now, these are examples of uh, this power laws in, I mean, your physics. This is a plot in 1945 plot by Guggenheim. This is a liquid vapor mixture versus vapor. So, he has plotted this 1945 plotted reduced pressure versus reduced temperature. And he says, here on, here on, and on. I mean, there are some 10 gases which are which just fall on each other. It is the same thing. So, the details do not mat matter. So, there is certain kind of universality here. And this, this is a famous experiment of binary mixture. At the critical point, there is a critical oscillations. Everything becomes white because all kinds of length scales are scattered, all wavelengths are scattered, all length scales exist. So, this, this becomes only at that particular point. Similarly, if you simulate a Ising model, you will find the droplets of all sizes existing at the critical point. So, you see this particular divergence at the critical point, okay. And you understand it that as you approach critical point, you are, you are going to have everything lined up. So, you may have bigger clusters and bigger clusters and bigger clusters and the coalies and the correlation length drops. Now, and the, these, uh, these models have dimensions and symmetry in matter. But, okay, one more thing. So, we can have one more question. Can we have complex exponents? In the sense that what is the power law, uh, this thing? Power law means uh, you plot it on a log log scale and it follows the straight line. So, it is like t raised to minus alpha or something like that. And can we have uh, life is complex? It has real as well as imaginary part. And can the imaginary part manifest itself? So, coming back to power law. One, one particular thing which was given was self organized criticality by Per Bach. So, it was that systems drive themselves to the critical point by feedback and the parameters change and so on and so forth. And um, there is a mechanism to extinguish large fires so that, fire, so that uh, everything is not lost and the allowing small ones to grow. This is the modus operandi. And the first model that was, I will just, just try to cut the introduction short. This must have been told by Professor Dhar. I was not in that lecture, but this was a sand pile model. It is a famous sand pile model that you drop sand one by one and then suddenly there is a brook. This particular pile collapses and then you again grow and collapses. And then there is a time lag avalanche. This was the initial thing. Actually, real sand piles, uh, some of them uh, do show power laws, but uh, in experiments, some they and some do not. This is another model. This may not have been covered. This is a Bach Snippen model. You have a lattice. You have a lattice, have many, 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 uh, you assign some random values as fitness. And you say that something with the smallest fitness, I will change its value and I will change the value of its neighbors. Interestingly, what happens is that the correlations grow in time. And you do not start choosing randomly. I mean, if you choose this site, you are often nearby. You choose 7 site, then 8 site, then 6 site, and then you site 1300 site. Then you are nearby that and you start somewhere. So, there are jumps between. So, the correlations develop uh, automatically, the, and then there are long range correlations develop and long range correlations. So, the, so this was the Bach Snippen model of evolution. So, Per Bach has an audaciously titled book, and How Nature Works, I mean, whatever it means. So, this is a, this was a very a beautiful book, please read it and these are highly cited and then we worked on it. So, there was a, something I will uh, just move ahead. And then there is an, another thing about um, this, uh, another reason for getting power laws in space and time uh, over a range of parameters, huh? the, not at the cru critical parameter, critical parameter value but at over a range of parameters and this is not so well known. This is known as Griffiths phase. So, this is a 1969 paper by R.J. Griffiths. This is a PRL and uh, the, it does not try to claim how nature works or something like that. This is a mathematical paper. It is shown in the class of randomly diluted Ising magnets that the magnetization fails to be an analytic function of the field H at H equal to 0 for a range of temperatures above at which spontaneous magnetization first appears. I mean, this is a clean, clean mathematical result. Now, what does it say? What it says is that this is a, forget this P, P is a disorder, P is a disorder. So, if you look at this particular thing at Tc, you have a ferromagnetic to paramagnetic transition. That transition is second order. When you turn in this particular, this uh, magnetic impurities means these are non-magnetic things, they are voids in the phase. Then what happens that after transition to paramagnetic phase, there is still a region 
which is still singular. I mean, you will keep on seeing power laws in this particular thing, and in measurements you get this, this is some kind of kink in susceptibility. Okay, so there is a region where you will see power laws over a range of parameters, not just at the critical par par parameter value, but over a range of parameters. So this is called Griffith space, and this happens because what so there is a group of uh, elements they put in blue. Now these uh, fellows in blue are aligned in some particular way, and they are very loosely connected to rest of the cluster. Now this fellow will have very difficult time to change itself. I mean, the, 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 uh, this, uh, this particular cluster can live really, really long time. And this particular such rare clusters, which have very, very long lifetimes, gives rise to what is known as Griffith phase. And this Griffith phase is manifested, shown in a range of uh, temperature values, range of parameter values, and not just at the critical temperature. And then there is a Harris criterion, which I will skip. Where this is a necessary condition for uh, why it happens. There are exponentially rare regions. Suppose you want to have a rare region of some particular space, half, some half, 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 something like that. So region of length 4 will be, say, 2 raised to minus 4, and region of um, length 5 may be 2 raised to minus 5 in probability, and so on and so forth. So th this particular, this probability is going down exponentially. However, it lives, its lifetime is exponentially higher. So there is a competition between the lifetime and the number of regions of this particular size. And when you make this particular convolution, it leads to a power law. So what happens in a rare region? The, the, I will just skip this. I will, and this is known as activated scaling universality class. And those who are interested in those kind of things should read it. So I will talk about dynamic self-organized criticality, dynamical version of it. What we did was that we will say that okay, in Bach's Nippon model you have a very, very many species on the lattice and you pick up the something with the smallest fitness. So you don't know the smallest fitness. I mean, if you know, if you have students in the class, you take exams, we take two exams, three exams and give him many, many chances and if you, if you fail at passing him, we pass him and we fail him. So uh, it is, uh, we, uh, the person, the thing is judged dynamically. So how is the response and over a time, you find its fitness, the environment finds its fitness, and what, what is punished is a person who is who appears to be least fit. Okay. So here we will change the what is perceived fitness, which is perceived by dynamics, and then we will punish the species with the smallest fitness and its snippers. This is the thing criterion we will use. So we will, so the model is this coupled map lattice model. This model needs no introduction for this audience. This is a big industry, at least in India. So we have almost everybody has at least one paper in coupled map lattice. So you have coupled map lattice. You couple this so-called tent map. So one minus epsilon, so there is a lattice. Each site evolves according to itself, according to the weight epsilon. You have epsilon by 2 coupling on the right hand side, epsilon by 2 coupling on the left side, left hand, left hand side, and then if f of xi plus 1 and f of xi minus 1, this is the coupling. The map used is tent map. The initial value taken is a, and then we change it. How do we change it? I am talking about that. What we will do is that we will look at its evolution over, say, if it, if it is a thousand uh, thing, then over 500 time steps, we will see the evolution of every site. In a window, over 500 time steps, so, so there is some maximum value each side takes, there is some minimum value, and where the difference is may the dip minimum, that it is not uh, responding adequately, then I am going to change its parameter value and its neighbor's parameter value. So I will change this particular value of A, in, and I will keep continuing. So if this, in this punishment, if this uh, site 27 is picked up and then site 35 is picked up, then there is a jump of it. So there is a, this particular jump size distribution is there. So I plot this particular jump size distribution, how many jumps of 8 were there, how many jumps of 6 were there, 5 were there, whatever. And if I plot this particular histogram, I get uh, this particular power law with the exponent minus 2.26, which is far from Bach's Nippon, but there is a different power law. Um, Bach's Nippon has 3.15, our model has uh, 2.26. This is a different power law, but this is the jump size, there is a distribution, there is a power law. There is another thing. When is first? When is the first time that the site is picked? Okay. 
when so this so certain sites may not be picked up at all for example in evolution this uh, uh, there are uh, cockroaches in the dinosaur eggs found so cockroaches survived even hiroshima and nagasaki cockroaches might inherit the earth so the cockroaches have much longer longer life compared to many other species we have seen so when is the first time that we are picked up so what is the first time, passage time if you look at that it also shows a power law this power is uh, slightly different from again uh, box snippen not, not very different 0.55 0.62 i don't think it is much different but the uh, jump size distribution was fairly different and then we look at trap time distribution what is trap time distribution means something some site is picked up at site 1300 and then that 1350 there is that it was trapped particularly for the time period 50 so you look at this particular trap time distribution when was it updated last and when it is updated next you look at those time differences those time differences again they follow a power law with uh, power 1. Point, minus 1.6 this does not depend on specific map we couple logistic and maps and they also show similar power laws in trap time distribution jump size distribution and uh, first return distributions so Uh, the exponents are similar though not same you can even do some one more thing we did uh, some fellows at logistic and some fellows at tent and you retain their character and you evolve it this this particular way still you get same exponent in the mixed model also it surprisingly they get same exponent then now i am so this is a version in which we get power law without tuning in parameter without i mean it is self organizing in a sense then this is another thing that we are working on we were worked on this is the contact process with asymmetric coupling so contact process is simple that uh, you are you I, there are some people in the room and they, they, they get, are infected i come in contact with them i get infected now here you can uh, so uh, each site it looks at its neighbors if they are infected it gets infected with probability p a p is the parameter that we are looking at consider a array of one dimensional array and every neighbor every fellow suppose it is of two types one is r and one is l r fellow looks at two neighbors on the right l fellow looks at two neighbors on the left now if any of the neighbors is connected with probability p then it gets infected there is a typical configuration will be r l l r got now here you look at the r r l l block now this particular first r is connected to r and l okay second r is connected to again two l's third l is connected on the left to to r and fourth l is connected to l and r now they this rr ll is not connected it's a happy family they don't talk very private people they don't talk with anybody else and then these people if they are recovered if they don't have disease they will never get it because they are just disconnected from the rest so if this particular fellow is infected in fact let us call it type 1 cluster so anything which starts with two r's and ends with two l's is a what we call type 1 cluster and anything sandwiched between such two type 1 clusters we will call type 2 clusters so once two type 1 clusters on both sides go to zero this type 2 clusters will eventually go to zero and now pc is one the critical because all the clusters are actually finite in the long time the, all the clusters are finite so pc is critical point at which the infection should die it is one so uh, all first type 1 clusters will die and then type 2 clusters will die and if you look at the order parameters close to 1 it is almost flat but it will eventually go to zero and it will go to zero eventually but you see there are fluctuations around the power law if you look at the power law there are if you look at the evolution of the parameter this is power law so it is not exactly t raised to minus delta there is a t minus delta to minus delta is decorated with something else now what it is decorated with suppose rho of t is equal to t raised to minus delta delta plus delta prime but i delta double prime then i delta double prime i can write it as uh, some, something like uh, cos delta double prime log t uh, if i take real part so rho of t is t raised to minus delta prime cos delta double prime log t so you you could look at it as a complex exponent so this is really true so if i multiply if i multiply by the real part p of rho of t into t raised to delta then it should show it it will show and it does show so these are much cleaner complex much cleaner oscillations uh, you they are within 1% it follows cos t plus phi some you have to add some phase of factor of course okay no this particular onset 
of this particular transition is later for larger p because then only the fragmentation occurs. The wavelength is larger for larger p. The onset is smaller, but the wavelength as well as amplitude are smaller for smaller uh, for for smaller value of p. So here you see complex oscillations in the order parameter, and this happens over a period. This happens for uh, epsilon 0 0.95, 0 0.93, 0 0.90, 0 0.87. I mean, there is a range. This is not at just one parameter value. There are several parameter values at which you get power laws. These power laws are complex, and these complex power laws occur over a range of parameters. This is the point I want to stress. Same thing in 2D and 3D. In 2D, suppose you connect to one, one, one side, up, down, right, left, something like that. Now, here also, if you connect to one person, then you have the clusters get, I mean, suppose you go up, 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 right, right, something like that. See, now, this is the, again, type 1 cluster because it does not speak to anybody. So, as long as you do not talk to it yourself, the cluster continues. And these are self avoiding walks. So, they are self avoiding of walks of certain length are type 1 clusters. So, and the clusters which are connected between these self avoiding clusters are type 2 clusters in 2D or 3D also. So, similar phenomena. So, this is practically 1D. If you, if you choose one neighbor, then even in 2D or 3D, practically 1D. So, similar thing should occur. And we, okay, here, uh, we do get power laws, but here I would like to. Huh, so, this number of this particular box of this particular length decay number of box in number of self avoiding box increase exponentially something like 2 raise to 2.67 raise to uh, n I think. But this, it is still smaller than 4 raise to n. So, 2.67 divided by 4 raise to n is exponentially decaying probability. Okay. And their lifetime grows exponentially. The lifetime grows exponentially in the, if you look at, just take a cluster of that particular length and see its lifetime. So, their lifetime grows exponentially with a caveat, with a small change. Small change is that there are odd even fluctuations about that. I mean, 2 is slightly greater and 3 is slightly there some. And I would argue that the log periodic oscillations are because of this odd even oscillations. Okay. And they get stamped uh, to the log, log thing. So, we say model lifetime like tau of x is equal to exponential b x minus d cos by x divided by, I mean there is data is too short for to fit anything, but you fit something. Okay. What I am doing? Okay, and the standard thing is to take the integral. I mean this rho of t is as you do x into p of x is expectation value of x. What is p of x? p of x number Okay. And this particular, uh, as, as time grows, this particular number goes down exponentially. So, exponential minus t upon tau x, tau x is a correlation time, a dx, this is. Now, general thing is do saddle point, if it is exponential minus bcx, etcetera. And the for okay, saddle point, I will not talk about. And then uh, you just uh, compute, we compute this integral numerically because for saddle point, we have to find minimum which we could not find. So, if you compute this integral numerically, it shows the log periodic oscillation. So, if you, if, we, if we add this particular ingredient of odd even oscillation, odd even oscillations in the, this, per, this particular thing of lifetime, exponential decorated with odd even, then you do get uh, log periodic oscillations in uh, this thing, la, la, larger b and the other things are also reproduced, like a long, larger b you get lar longer wavelength and so on. Now, we will discuss another model. The other model is uh, of strongly perturbed contact process. So, you have uh, sites which will get infected if you get, if any of the neighbors will, will get infected. This is called DP type. And then there is other type which is compact DP that if both my neighbors are infected and you must get infected. Okay, if both my neighbors are infected, you must get infected. This is called uh, strongly, this is a, uh, this is a two types of sites which are present on a lattice. Then, for compact directed percolation, there are two absorbing state, all ones is absorbing state, all zeros is also absorbing state. For DP, of course, zero is the only absorbing state. And this is in the activated scaling universality class, which I will not talk about because it is known that there is a such a, there is a disorder. It is something like 
PC changing from one point to other and it is in activated scale. So there is a power loss which is continuously changing power loss over a period. Okay. So the, the row of T shows power loss over, over a range of parameter values. This is activated scaling universality class and uh, but what and the power tends to zero at the critical point it becomes logarithmic. I will talk about another quantity. I will talk about the quantity which, which is in the active, which is in the active region, okay? not in the passive region. So in the active region, we, I will look at the quantity called uh, persistence. Now what is persistence? Persistence means how long you did not change your religion or whatever. So uh, suppose a site is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, something 1. Then this particular fellow has not uh, shifted from 0 for very long time, say 7 times steps, 6 times steps. So it has persisted. So somebody who has, so the fraction of sites which have not departed from their initial condition even once until time t are persistent sites. So if I look, so persistence goes to 0 in the active sites. And I will look at this particular persistence. And if I look at this particular persistence in this particular case, it shows a power law again superposed with log periodic oscillations. So you get log periodic oscillations. Again the same argument, it, is, it can be argued that it is like a complex exponent. And now there are two surprises. One is that there is a continuously varying complex exponent. And secondly, um, so the continuously varying persistence exponent, real part is continuously varying, that is fine. And uh, this is also not reported. And then it is complex. So there is a Griffiths phase in persistence. So you can say that there is a Griffiths phase in order parameter is known, but you have Griffiths phase in persistence. You have not, you don't, you have persistence exponent which is continuously varying and it is complex. Complex persistence, so these oscillations become bigger as p tends to 1 and the reason it becomes p, so is very fine. I mean it goes. Why Griffiths phase in persistence? The Griffiths phase in persistence is because there is a, this uh, in compact directed percolation, if one is surrounded by ones, it remains one. So if you have a block of ones, I mean it is stubborn, it, it is difficult to invert those. So if a zero comes from outside, then make this particular uninfected fellow, uh, infected fellow uninfected is very, very difficult. And this, this particular lifetimes of this persistence are again grow exponentially with odd even fluctuations. And due to this odd even fluctuations, you have uh, this log periodic oscillations in this particular process. You factor out, then you will get log periodic So these are two works on the Griffiths phase. And I will finish about the recent works. So these are zigzag patterns and I to I put two pictures from, from experiments. There are several experiments which show zigzag and checkerboard patterns. Don't ask me details of these experiments. So uh, this, but there was uh, in several experimental conditions, this zigzag and checkerboard patterns are seen. And now, how do we quantify them? That's the one thing. And here, this is not a. This here also we see oh, power laws over a range of well, how, what what are what I'm talking about. So this is again our coupled map lattice thing. Now, in a coupled map lattice thing, what I'm saying is that suppose I encode the coupled map. I mean, like this that. A spin at site i is 1 if site 8 is 1 if 8 is site x8 is greater than x7. And if x8 is less than x7, then it is minus 1. Suppose I say that. Okay. So something is bigger, then it is plus 1. Then I have given example 0 0.3, 0 0.4 will be something like plus, plus 1, then plus 1, then minus 1, something like that. Now, if I have a checkerboard pattern, that is zigzag pattern, something goes up and down, you have strictly alternating sequence of plus ones and minus ones. Right? And similarly, uh, sorry, uh, zigzag pattern. And checkerboard pattern is, you can say, it is direct, direct product of two checkerboard patterns. If you should have a plus one, minus one sequence in uh, x direction and plus one, minus one sequence in y direction also. So my order parameter, for example, in uh, one dimension will be si plus si plus one. If the consecutives are plus 1 and minus 1, this will be 0 strictly and it will go to 0. And if they are plus 1, 2 plus 1, it will be plus 2 or minus 2. I take modulus of that and if I divide by 2 and something like that, then this is my order parameter. For strictly checkerboard pattern, it is, has to go to 0. In 2D, it is, I take some more rows as well as some more all columns and we call it phase defect as my order parameter. If I look at this particular order parameter, suppose for example, for this particular case, there is a 
zigzag pattern and then here the zigzag pattern is uh, moved out. Now, if you look at the, we look at this particular quantity, phase defect move and we also define persistence that if x8 is greater than x7 and modulo 2 we put this uh, then and if it x8 remains greater than x7 up to time 70 then it has persisted. So, the fraction of the persistent site as well as the phase defects, it goes to 0 as a power law over a range of period, over a range of period from epsilon equal to minus 1.26 to minus 2.61 such a big range, it goes like a power law for coupled Gauss maps and the bifurcation diagram gives no clue from minus 2.61 to minus 1.26. I mean normally if you have a zigzag pattern, you will have two bands somewhere. If you look at around minus 2.6, I mean this whole y axis is populated. The bifurcation diagram does not give, give a clue that the uh, this particular zigzag pattern will arise at all. So, if I make this particular uh, this thing, then only you can see that there is a, there this pattern exists, this pattern it is going to this pattern A and B, I see it over a range of parameters. If I look at phase defects, you can look at I mean statistical physics will people will say this is sublattice magnetization. So, if you look at the defects, the defects propagate like a random occurs and they annihilate, it is almost like Ising model. And it is almost like Ising model in one more way that this particular exponents, these exponents are minus 0.5 like in one day Ising model and persistence exponent is minus 3.75 which is again like one day Ising model over a range of parameters in two dimensions. If you do it two dimensions and look at the checkerboard patterns, we again see power laws over a range from minus 1.25 to minus 2.1 and the, um, the power is minus 0.45 in two dimension again it matches with the Ising model. The persistence exponent is minus 0.22, it again matches with the Ising model. We have not shown the finite size scaling, finite scaling size scaling shows 2.16 which is, which is surprising because in 1D at least critical temperature and the persistence exponent temperature is same. At any non-zero temperature, you do not have persistence exponent because spin will flip due to finite temperature. In 2D, zero temperature is different and critical temperature is different. Here you have a decay of order parameter like critical temperature and you have a persistence exponent like zero temperature. So, this is rather weird and same results we have obtained from logistic map. So, in summary, I, we have talked about power laws in space and time without tuning in parameters. We have discussed some various uh, uh, models like uh, uh, firstly we looked at an interesting link between Ising model and coupled map lattice and uh, where maps have no Ising symmetry, Gauss map, logistic map, it is not f of minus x is equal to minus f of x, anything like that. And we showed that couple of examples where complex refuse phase exists. And then we uh, gave certain, sub, and we also talked about self organized criticality, where dynamical version in which you do not punish the least spe fish species, but which appears to be least species. So, these are the publications. These uh, uh, papers on um, complex grip space are published in physical review. This uh, paper on self organized criticality was published in CNSNS in 2018, and this work on checkerboard patterns is uh, recently published in Pure Sultans and Factors. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for this talk. Uh, other questions? So, uh, when you said model independent for that CML case, where yes, you yes, were yes. getting same, uh, almost same, yeah. um, you had logistic map at the fully chaotic. Logistic map at, uh, at the, four, uh, uh, there was a I mean, I'm wondering whether it is uh, holds for uh, chaotic max, whether a tractor goes from zero to one. I mean, suppose you had bands or at least, had a at least, at least in the Gauss. Okay, uh, in uh, logistic map also there was a chaotic part, huh. and uh, in Gauss map here clearly no, you have the seen. Gauss map, the where you had mixed your tent and your logistic in the logistic. first bit. Oh, in the first bit. Huh. Oh, yeah. They, they, to begin with, they were chaotic, and it, they remain in the chaotic region. Right. I took care that so, they remain so in the chaotic region. So my question was, if it was say a two-band chaos or or something else, uh, do you expect the exponents to change? No, no. The, the the okay. In the first part, huh. the I take the values for the logistic map between three and four. 
I choose them randomly ah, between three okay, and four. Okay. It could so, be. So you could. It could. You. Be it could. Anything. It could go. Okay. It could go. There. And it helped. Okay, it that was good. Uh, uh, can I ask one one other small question? Yes. Is there any example of the Griffiths phase uh, kind of thing? In could you please system? use the microphone? Oh, sorry. Uh, is there any other example of? The I, not that I know of. Uh, not that. Not you that know I know. Of. Of. Okay. Thank you. One more question. Uh, hi, Prashant. So, uh, you know, like the checkerboard appears very naturally if we do this uh, parallel updating thing in the easing model. But there we don't expect to see any power laws or things like that. So, uh, I, you know, this is this got nothing to do with the way you update, right? It's not an uh, updating scheme artifact. This is uh, our updating scheme has been uh, synchronous. I have not tried other updating schemes. Okay, but then you know, in easing, we do get this uh, checkerboard, you know, when we do the synchronous updating, and we know that that's an artifact, right? So you don't expect any power loss there. So I was just wondering, like, you know, um, on in easing, of course, uh, okay, yeah. uh, in easing, of course, in those models, there is no real dynamics. So you can do Swenson Bang, and the system can quickly come. And if the system quickly comes down, then there may be per there may be no persistence at all. Certain things may be left unrepresented. So there are. Uh, so this is actually dependent on the uh, algorithm you choose in uh, those systems. Uh, in dynamical systems, of course, uh, yeah, it could change with the algorithm. But the parameter uh, you okay, whether you get power law will not or not could change with the algorithm. Okay, there seem to be no more questions. Then I would like uh, to thank all speakers and I uh, hope you join.